First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Lisa Wilty is, uh, of course, uh, the director over at the Stanley Theater, and there's been a lot of talk over this uh, art space, uh, low income housing complex that looks like is plotted for or is plotted for the parking lot, which is adjacent to the Stanley Theater. And a lot of people are talking about this one. Lisa, good morning. Thanks for coming on. Uh, hi. How are you? Good. Good. So, what are you? Uh, what are your thoughts here, Lisa, on this from the uh, from Stanley's perspective? Well, you know, just to be, you know, kind of go back a little bit. About a year ago, I saw a Google Earth photograph, and the outline of what back then was art space was sort of like dropped on this map and we didn't really have much to go on in terms of formulating an opinion. And then uh, this February I was able to meet uh, with uh, Commissioner Thomas and I saw some uh, more, uh, well, actually actual arc drawings and it really started to raise a lot of questions about how this building not only will environmentally impact our, our property, but also the ability to do shows, which is how we stay in business. So as we've been studying this incredibly, uh, with incredible thoughtfulness, Mm -hmm. really, in trying to have it make sense is, you know, you start to look at environmental things like how is water going to move now, uh, snow. Um, You look at, you start start to worry about the sewer stress because we already have backed up lines in our basement coming in from the sewer lines. So you, you get worried, and, you, and these questions just start to uh, layer themselves. And then you look at, you know, the cultural concern, because we are in favor of the One World Garden. Um, we've been in favor now for well over a year. Mm-hmm. We think it would be a great connector for two neighborhoods um, to bring people in from Park Avenue downtown uh, as, as a great you know, way for them just to walk downtown. I feel sometimes uh, they're not, they don't feel included because there's just these walls and the fences up. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I, and we, and we just a fan of parks too. So, um, so there was that. And then you start to study how the trucks are going to get in. You look at this drawing and what people might have seen from that picture that ran in the paper was the ingress actually goes under the first story of the building and the drawing I saw that ingress was 13 feet, and according to my tech guys, a box truck won't get in it, let alone a, a tractor trailer mm. that's 53 feet long. Because also what you kind of don't see, and maybe you know because you've gone to the theater quite a bit, Bill, but there's, it, the parking lot is actually more sloped upwards than you think, than you right. than it feels yeah. if you really yeah. look at it. So if you have these 53-foot trucks trying to get past under a building, um, I, I reckon, and so do my tech guys, that they'll get stuck. So that would actually is you know put a lot of our large shows, which are really the the revenue movement uh, for our building. We really capture a lot of revenue with those bigger shows like Styx or Broadway or Aria Speedwagon that do come in sometimes upwards of ten tractor trailers and park up there in the back, tucked away, and uh, provides easy access uh, to load in and load out and run out to your trucks and. Quite frankly, if they have to start parking at a distance, um, yeah, that would yeah. add to um, time, and time is money. And then pretty soon, you're priced out of doing the show altogether, or the ticket price escalates so high you can't because the market just can't bear a three hundred dollar show yeah, ticket. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you know, you know what I mean here. This is so. This has got a lot of different pieces now that are evolving. And so our position, it's, it's not about art space. I'm quite familiar with the organization um, uh, out in California where I'm from. They have uh, one um, a location in Santa Cruz. And, but that one, again, it's located, I think, a mile, mile and a half from downtown. So it's in its own area, um, which is ideal, I think, for what they do. It becomes very residential. So this is not about art space itself. Um, This is about any real estate development project going in there at this point. Um, It really would put the Stanley Theater economically in peril. And at a point when I think the building is, even though we've come out of a COVID year, 
on its way to becoming uh, something really interesting, like we talked about several months ago uh, when we activated our soundstage, which is slowly gaining speed and momentum. Yeah, yeah. So now we're worried. Are we going to lose, um, you know, a Netflix series that wants to come and use our soundstage? Are we going to start losing business that we're trying to court? So it's 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 a struggle to kind of wrap our yeah, head around yeah. it. Lisa, uh, Andrew. Uh, has uh, Betsy or Becky, I'm, I'm drawing the blank exactly, Becky. has Art Becky. Space contacted you, had any meetings with you, had any conversations mm-hmm. with you with regard to this project? Uh, not until a meeting was taken about a week ago. Uh, no one had contacted about design or contacted um, our immediate neighbors nor our tenants. And, you know, our tenants are in Quarry Restaurant and Broadway. Um, and when the drawings were starting to, the story was coming out, I'm like, hey, has anyone talked to them about this design? Like, there was no neighborly input, no neighborly engagement ahead of design. So, unfortunately, it kind of leaves you in a frustrated point because you feel like you're the bad guy coming out and saying no. But if this conversation possibly had happened, you know, seven months ago, we wouldn't be here right now. Is um, there, has so there, that, yeah. Uh, and and I would I would have thought that the city would have uh, would have reached that's, out. To that's you. my thought. Was yeah. I was going to say the same thing. Well, like I said, we my, I met with Commissioner Thomas uh, just before we shut down in March of 2020, okay. and uh, right. we had a brief conversation about this. It's when the DRI was coming into play, and everyone was scrambling with their projects, and we had talked about it because the issue of the parking was a concern, and mm-hmm. um, and again. Um, I mean, the drawing, what I saw was not a, a rendering or it was not an official, like, this is what we'd like to do. It was just placed to give me an idea. And what you see then and what you see now, to me, are incredibly different because one okay. now takes into account height in mm-hmm. four stories and, you know, our sunlight's going to be adjusted okay. and those windows on the south side of the building that overlooked the loading dock and this parking lot actually were put there on purpose to capture sunlight to help with our utilities, okay. our heating bills. So there's a few things that, you know, we, sh- you know, it's just a lot of people don't know about it until you start talking. Mm-hmm. So we, we, uh, we asked for a meeting. We had one uh, about a week ago and uh, they are scheduled to come to the property to understand firsthand what I'm talking about uh, this Monday. So we'll see, um, you know, so maybe they understand that wh- where we're at. Yeah. Is there any abil- ability or ever been a conversation about, <clears throat> because, the parking lot is right next to your building, and I know there are other restaurants and there are other options down there, but I don't know that anybody uses the f- the fullness of that parking lot the way you guys do when you have a show. Ever been a conversation or an ability, purchase the lot, acquire the lot from the city as a way to protect that? You know, that's a great question. You know, you kind of look at all the all the money you make the city over the last 10, 15 years, and... You, you kind of think, wow, we've kind of paid for it umpteen times over already. It'd be great if they uh, maybe donated it to us, and you know, maybe you know, my volunteers even have reached out a few of them and said if the lot would would even be donated to us, and we manage it for those immediate core businesses in the area, they would actually start a beautification committee to come in and keep it tidy, and you know, maybe charge minimal numbers for um, parking yeah, yeah. on show nights, and then use that money really just to put it into a parking fund that, you know, repairs lights and takes care of maintenance and raises fund monies for repairs. And so I have to give my tip my hat to some of my, my volunteers that reached out about that because everyone's thinking about how to do things in, and they're all good things. You know, I'm not right, hearing right. anybody say no to art space. Everybody's actually coming out of the word work thinking of places to put it because yeah, I've heard they want to save yeah. that. They don't want it. To, they don't want to lose it. They love it. it. I agree. I mean, you know, so. Is there any way that the project could be modified in a way that it would fit in that space? Or are you saying you you guys at this point are saying no, no construction in that space? You know, I would have to see it to to understand yeah. it, but the way those big shows, you know, I talked to Broadway um, a few days ago. I talked to Danielle, and I said, you know, pull a tech file for me. I got to see, you know, how are you using this thought on a tech, because those are becoming more and more prevalent for the business. And um, one of her shows had 10 53-foot tractor trailers, two box trucks. Mm. Um, it needed. It was a two-day load-in. Um, it was 60 extra laborers the first day, 72 the second day. So 
you know, A, we're creating jobs, which is wonderful, but also the access to bring that production to the theater and uh, for 29 days and the revenue, you know, was extraordinary, not yeah. just for the theater, brought in over 5,100 patrons in three shows, which is a lot of bodies downtown yep. and cars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, the economic accelerator that the partnership we have with Broadway is so significant. You know, you're looking at... In 29 days, roughly three quarters of a million dollars was spent in Utica, and that's a lot of money. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. to me, to even put that revenue for the city in terms of its hotels and the restaurants and the bars and all the residual business that comes from that, uh, I just can't wrap my head around how you fracture that. I mean, that's, yeah. that's such a, an amazing thing for our town. All right, uh, Lisa Wilsey, we appreciate it. And uh, this is uh, this is one of those stories that, has sure gained <laughs> a great deal of traction, and uh, we appreciate you guys coming out and giving us your position on this. Thanks so much. Well, thank you, Bill. Thanks, Andrew. See you later. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Uh, Lisa from the Stanley Theater. So there you go. Um, you talking to me or him? <laughs> sorry. I know you always get left off. I'm sorry, but um, they. I, I, I don't see anything. Pretty clear stance. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything that will that will satisfy the Stanley Theater. Any construction. Or any modification, even though they, she said they'd look at it. I don't see anything that would, uh, would work. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows granger has got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done.